Hola, ¿qué tal? Soy Matías Rebolledo y seguimos aquí en la Seminci, en lo que ya es la 69 edición de la Semana Internacional del Cine de Valladolid. Hoy eh, seguimos ampliando ¿no? nuestro espectro, eh, dando a entender lo grande que es el, el festival. Hoy tenemos a Alexander Horwath, director de Henry Fonra for, for President. Sorry. How are you doing today? Um, wonderful. It's a beautiful place and every day has been very nice to me. Uh, is this your first time in Valladolid? Yes, it is. Oh, wow. It's my first film, my first time in Valladolid. <laughs> so let's let's dive into into that. Um, how was it? How was the, the idea for the film born? How did you come up with with it? Well, I, I did not plan to become a filmmaker. I have <laughs> spent my career in the film in film culture. I ran the Vienna Film Festival and the Austrian Film Museum, and I wrote about cinema and I teach cinema. And the producer, an old friend who had become a producer, told me. Uh, some years ago, you have to make a film, you know so much about film history, don't you want to deal with cinema as a subject? And I said, no, there are too many other film people who know this, who do this all the time, why should I suddenly become a filmmaker? And I pushed her back and, and at the end I said, well, uh, I think the only subject you could interest me in is Henry Fonda and America, <laughs> because I thought this is a topic I had been interested in this actor for a long time as a, already as a teenager and then also later and I've been in America many many times and and had known a bit about the history of the nation and I had realized because I also made a retrospective about this actor that he is a unique case where you can tell the story of America through this man both through the actual biography of him and his family and his forefathers who came to America in 1651, but also through his roles. The persona of Henry Fonda is as important to me as the factual person who lived. And I realized that I can think of no other actor where important moments and aspects of American society and American history can be told through and with this man as, as my pilot, as I called it. Henry Fonda will be the pilot of my searching uh, into the Ameri the history of America. And I thought, okay, this may be a subject where there are not 50 other people who can easily make an interesting film like that. Maybe this is a subject that has waited for me. So I told this producer friend, so if you manage to get a little bit of financing together, that may be something where I have to, I dare, it's really a question of daring to, you know, I'm, in my late 50s, so to, to dare to become a filmmaker at a late stage, you know, it's not, it's tricky. <laughs> and I thought, oh, I can only fail, you know, I will fail, why should I be able to make an interesting film? But step by step, she convinced me that I, I would be able and we got everything together as an Austrian-German co-production. And I did it and I was quite relieved and happy that it turned out to be uh, more interesting than I had ever hoped for. People seem to like it a lot everywhere. The, the, uh, speaking about uh, interesting things, the movie deals with this premise that talks about Henry Fonda being alive for so-called uh, 325 years uh, alongside his, his characters. But I wanted to ask you about, besides the historical character of, of Henry Fonda, why him? Why, why did you felt attracted to him? That at, in the beginning of my film, there is a kind of prologue where I try to explain or try to to demonstrate my personal attachment to him because it was during a trip to Paris, my first trip to a foreign country at age 15 with my parents. We spent three weeks there and almost every day we also went to the movies because my parents liked cinema also and, and because Paris has such a rich film scene, I, we saw three Henry Fonda films during that stay in mm -hmm. Paris uh, and and I I was fascinated I had already been fascinated by his daughter Jane uh, from watching some of her films in the late 70s and then I saw these films by with with him and it was important films and I I it's like psychoanalysis you know I cannot really one cannot really analyze oneself <laughs> but I think some of the aspects of this actor who was never triumphalist you know he was never 
the strong, virile, heroic He's type. He's an, an anti-John Wayne in a way. In a way, yes. And, and he was a reflective person. As I found out, he was also a reflective person in real life. But his acting style is very minimal almost compared to some other Hollywood stars who are ex very expressive. And Fonda is a, a well-trained actor and a very virtuoso actor without showing himself to be a virtuoso you know he's also in a way the opposite of brando or Lawrence olivia he's very withdrawn he works with minimal means and he's a skeptic that's the word that i think fits him best and i guess uh, i have similar you know traits i i don't i would always question something before before saying this is this is like that. This is the truth. I have I know the truth. I have the truth. I know that America is the greatest nation in the world. <laughs> All these kinds of statements are f very foreign to me, and they were also foreign to Fonda. And I I believe that I saw in him uh, a type that is quite uncommon for Americans, at least the cliche of Americans. <laughs> So I, 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 when I came back, I saw more films. I wrote a little in school. In my, in, uh, at 17, I wrote a, a, in, in English literature, I wrote a, a paper in mm -hmm. school about him. But then also for many years, I did not think about Henry Fonda. You know, I, I began to be a critic and a curator and, and so on. But when I stopped my work at the film museum, at the Austrian Film Museum in 2017, one of the topics that I ended my long time there was already called that, Henry Fonda for President. It was a selection of 25 of his films. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was in, in the moment when this producer friend asked me, you should be a filmmaker. You should be... I, had, I had him in my mind, you know, he was on my mind because I had just the year before I had made this retrospective and I had read a lot about him and I had understood that my my intuition was really true that because of his forefathers because of his the roles because of his per personality he just he crosses if, it, if it's a line you know if henry fonda's lives fictional and factual lives are a, a line like this and the history of america and the important aspects of american history are another line i would simply found that there are so many ways where they intersect yeah, yeah. Uh, and this became, you know, I picked maybe 15 moments in time, years, places, and I, it's, it's a silly and stupid idea to say one can tell the history of America, even in a three-hour film. It's, so you have to be selective. You have to choose uh, moments and places and s what we call satellite characters. So in the film I talk about different kinds of people who actually lived uh, early feminist writer, Margaret Fuller, a reactionary general in the Cold War, Curtis LeMay, and, and, and a gun, gunfighter, a mythical gunfighter, Wyatt Earp, and, and so on. So with these satellite characters, these places, these, these moments in time, all, all connected in some way to Fonda and Fonda's persona, I thought I could create this, this I called it a double helix, you know, it's the, la the Fonda line and the America line, they, they go to <laughs> two spirals that go somewhere. So it's, since it's an essay film, it's really, I treated it as, it's, it's much richer than any written essay can mm -hmm. be, but I come, I come from writing. So I thought the essay film as a, as a very important genre or type, type of, of documentary film, that's the form that's waiting for me because I, I knew my voice, my, my reflection would also play a, an important part. Mm -hmm. I know that the whole film is trying to answer this, but in a way, uh, but what would you think that Henry Fonda would think of uh, today's America? Because we are seeing the movie barely two weeks before the, yeah. the, the most important election maybe <laughs> in this century in America. So I wanted to ask you about that. Well, uh, it's of course. I don't forget the, the mic. <laughs> uh, Fonda died 42 years ago, and in his late late years, as you can hear in in my film, he spoke about Nixon and Reagan, and he hated both really <laughs> deeply. Even though Reagan was a Hollywood colleague, and he had a normal relationship and acquaintance, but he just hated their politics. So Fonda was a, a left liberal all all his life, um, and he. 
sometimes he campaigned for candidates of the Democratic Party. He was friends with Kennedy and he, even as a young man, he supported Franklin D. Roosevelt and took part in certain activities. But he, and that's in, in a way the irony of my title, he himself would never think himself able to fulfill a political job. You know, mm -hmm. he, he, people thought, make, made, they dreamed of campaigns that Henry Fonda should be our president, we need someone like him. Mm -hmm. But he was such a shy and, and withdrawn person, he said, as opposed to my daughter, who is a great activist, Jane Fonda, you know, she appears in public and she stands for her causes and what she believes in, he, he will say what he believes in in an interview, but he would never be able to go on a stage as himself. He can go on any stage playing another character, but he cannot uh, uh, go on stage uh, as himself and be a political candidate. Uh, to your question, uh, it's hard to imagine uh, what he would think this is a dystopian science fiction <laughs> uh, situation that he finds himself in. I don't think he, people of his generation would, not only him, but also those who were Republican voters, like his close friend James Stewart, would not think that a figure like Trump and the and the climate and the and the, a, a media political circus the way it looks today could could exist in 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 not so not so you know not in the twenty seventh century but <laughs> yeah. just fifty years after the after the seventies or so <laughs> so it's it's hard to I think he would, he says he has to puke, he has to throw up when he hears a Reagan speech. I think he would slit his throat, uh, if or Trump's throat. Maybe he would become a political assassin. Uh, I don't know, it's it's so, that your question makes clear how far we we have come. Uh, and of course there are progressive and, 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 and and productive forces also in American politics. My my view of America is not one-sided. I know America and Americans too well to 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 know that that uh, it's an it's always an ambivalent situation. But the the extremism to which this the Trump presidency we already had and this these campaigns now have led is is it's hard to since it happens since certain forms of of these kinds of politics also happen in, in to a certain degree in European countries. Maybe we have to get used to the fact that what we understood as politics, thinking of the of what is best for the common good, you know, th trying to find a consensus between different uh, convictions. This job, a very, uh, you know, you, it has to be a trustworthy person to fulfill these these kinds of jobs. That that's in the past you know we won't have that anymore in politics and that's a shame and a horror and i'm i'm a bit fearful uh for the near future <laughs> well since uh henry fonda passed away and that kind of manner to understand politics also passed away i wanted to ask you there is someone in the actual landscape that you can like compare to him an actor i think I mean, I could start now naming names, but I think one important difference is the role of cinema. Okay. I mean, you're a movie magazine, so this may sound sad to you, but I think <laughs> that period in which Henry Fonda was alive and active from the 1930s to the early 1980s was an era in which the cinema played an absolutely dominant role next to radio. Uh, of course, television then came in and became more important, but in general, the cinema played an enormous part in the in the public imagination, in public discourse, in what I what Norman Mailer called the dream life, and I use that term in in the film. So, for people to act as citizens in a political dimension and to be moviegoers to to see films and to understand America, to understand the way we live through cinema. This was so close together that you could you could, um, uh, as an actor, drawing so much Im imaginative attention from from your audience. They projected everything onto their big stars. You know, the cinema is no longer in that yeah. in that position. Will for better or worse, you know, the cinema still produces great works. I, there's no question about it, but the 
centrality of cinema for public life is gone. Even if we have still millions of people going to see Marvel Universe films and, <laughs> and other films, it's been replaced by other things. First by television and now we live in a world in which the social media and the, the kinds of rhetoric, the kinds of discourse, the, 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 the images and the imaginary that is being created by social media is the equivalent, it's not the same, but it's the equivalent in, its, in, in, in terms of its important role for public life, it's the equivalent of what cinema and radio were in the mid-20th mid century. Totally. So in that sense, no actor, no fam as famous as he may be, could ever play, I think, the role in public imagination that people like John Wayne or Fonda or, or others played in, in the 20th century. George Clooney would be a logical figure because he's also a left liberal. Uh, he even made a, he created a remake of Failsafe, mm -hmm. one of Fonda's greatest films. And he's, he's a politically outspoken person and he, he helps good causes, etc. But, and he's a, a very handsome, <laughs> guy like Fonda was a very handsome guy uh, who tries to play who who to to function in different genres, but actually I cannot I could not say that it mainly has to do with the fact that the cinema is elsewhere now uh, and Where? and the Trump place. is a media creation too you know Trump <laughs> is the creation of a TV show The Apprentice. Uh, and and of other media forms so we have a, a media figure. Reagan was the last possible candidate of the classical Hollywood era, and he became president and was there for eight years. With Reagan, also that role of cinema ended, and now it's Trump typically a product of a different media constellation uh, is, is what we get. <laughs> First an actor, now a, a wrestler. Alexander, thank you so much for your time, and let's hope the best for the, for the film. Thank you very much for the interview. <laughs> a todos los demás, muchísimas gracias por seguirnos siempre en Kinótico.es, donde tenéis toda la información de esta Semana Internacional del Cine de Valladolid. Ya sabéis, Kinótico.es, la primera con K, la segunda con C.